What you see here next to me are two handguns, a shotgun, and two semi-automatic weapons. And the reason why I have this on display, these are my weapons, these are my guns, is because earlier today, I decided to go to a local gun store to see how long it would take me to buy a semi-automatic weapon, an AR-15. In the military, I used to have one of these. We called it M16 when I was at the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. And I wanted to find out how long it took me. Now, you may ask why. Here's why. Yesterday, an interesting thing happened with my Instagram account. So we recently hired a social media uh, team to manage my Instagram account because we couldn't do everything together. But I said, here, let me see what you can do with our Instagram account. On the second day, he decided to post this picture. So what you see to the right is me at the age of five or six holding my uncle's shotgun, very innocent. To the left is me in my late 30s holding an AR-15 as well as a shotgun in my house. And this picture was originally posted on October 14, 2017. I'll show you this image here so you can see it. So this marketing agency decided to repost it. Now we take full responsibility, repost it on the day of March 4, our lives that was taking place in DC, which 800,000 brave uh, young adults and teenagers decided to go march against what took place recently in the shooting with 17 lives being taken away where a kid came in, a 19-year-old kid came in with a semi-automatic weapon, 17 innocent kids were uh, killed. And the reason why I did not take the picture down, a lot of people say, how come you didn't take the picture down? Number one, it is my Instagram account. No matter what marketing agency we put up, it is my responsibility. I didn't want to take it down for the following reason. I got a lot of hate, I lost a lot of followers on that specific down my Instagram account. I left it because I don't disagree with what I see in the description. I left it because this is truly my core belief system of what I believe in. However, I do believe some major reforms need to be taking place today because this is a matter that's got a national attention, international attention. And if we don't look at it, we just look aside and say, well, that's all right, let's not can you know, ruffle the feathers and it's just the left trying to get people going. It's just this, it's just that. Let's not tick off NRA and let's not talk anything about this issue. I think we need to. I cannot stand funerals. I can't stand funerals. I've been to many. Recently, I was at a funeral, and one of the things that bothers me with a uh, funeral is when young people are dead or killed, uh, and I witnessed the mom and dad when they get up and tell the story. I was in Miami, and I saw this one very close friend of mine who got up. His father got up and spoke for 10 minutes, and the entire time, he was in tears. There are 17 parents that are going through that right now after what took place with this mass shooting. And typically, I cannot stand bringing politics to value team. And I cannot stand it. I don't like it. I dislike it. I have very strong opinions politically, but I didn't want to bring it up. However, this entire experience with what happened on Instagram, due to the respect I have for the followers, prompted me to want to actually go and do some due diligence to let you know how much this matter means to me. And so with that being said, here's a social experiment of what happened when we decided to go out there and buy some automatic weapon and seeing how long it would take for me to leave with one. We're gonna to go to a local gun store here and see how long it'll take us to buy a semi-automatic weapon. Communication. So we're at the store right now. We're about to walk in to buy a semi-automatic weapon. Let's see how long it takes. By the way, I'm in the city of Plano, Texas. Mario, can you give me your phone? I wanna show you exactly yeah. what time it is. It is Monday, March 26th, 1140 AM, okay? Terrible comparison, but let's go see how long it takes us to buy this <laughs> semi-automatic weapon. And now I'm walking out with this. Okay, Mari, can you open this? All right, so here's our weapon. Here's the magazine that, by the way, this magazine is not allowed in the state of California. This is a time, 11.59. So as you can see, we pulled up here. It was 11.40 a.m., March 26th, walked in. They were busy. There were five other customers in there. There was a transaction taking place where a guy was selling three other guns. Only two people were helping us out. And I was still able to buy a semi-automatic weapon with a magazine with 40 rounds do a background check and walk out in 19 minutes. By the way, 
There's nothing, I have nothing against this uh, stores. These are businesses, they're running businesses, they're following the laws. There's nothing wrong with this business. I've bought guns from them before. Proudly I buy guns from these guys before. But there's no way in the world it ought to be this easy for somebody to walk out with a semi-automatic weapon. It just shouldn't be this easy. 19 minutes, really? 19 minutes? You mean to tell me, by the way, this is the one that I actually bought. Here's the box of the Smith & Wesson semi-automatic weapon I just bought. Here's the receipt of the weapon I just bought. It took me 19 minutes to buy this. You mean to tell me anybody out there in nearly 40 states can go and buy a semi-automatic weapon and come out, for the most part, in 19 minutes? See, I'm uncomfortable with that. And by the way, a lot of you that follow by attainment, you are capitalist, you're pro-business, right? So many of you are also Republican. I also have a big following of Democrats, and some of you could care less about politics. This is not a Democratic issue. This is not a Republican issue. This is an American issue. This is a real life issue that we're facing. And I have some insight that I'm gonna share with you that's maybe different than what you've heard on the news that I am using from the financial industry and the things that's used it in a secured, regulated financial industry that many people in this world can say, this makes sense, why not apply it? And keep this in mind, no matter what I talk about and no matter what reforms we do, no matter what it is, we can never prevent 100% of shootings. We cannot. We cannot prevent of the bad guy getting guns illegally. I remember being 17 years old, 16 years old in Glendale, California. One of my friends was buying a gun, and it was kind of cool. We went to this place in Eagle Rock, and it was under a parking lot, which was dark. We pulled up to the guy. He opened up his trunk. He had 70, 80, 100 guns in his trunk, and it was all this sound. Which one do you want? This one's 75 bucks. This one's $200. You want this one? This is $300. And he got some bullets, and he bought the gun, and we left. I was 16, 17 years old. If the bad guy wants to get a gun, he can get a gun. But that still doesn't mean we shouldn't have a reform. So the stuff I'm going to talk about will have to do with background checks with training, with education, and some precaution measures that we can take. Because when you look at the data, here's what the numbers look like. Last year, we had 36,100 people that died due to a gun. Out of this 36,100, 21,300 was suicide, 11,000 was homicide. There are four items I want to address when it comes down to having a reform with the current gun laws that we have. And the first item is background checks. Now, when it comes down to background checks, some are for it, some are against it. But I want to take a completely different approach with background checks. You see, I've been in the financial industry since the day before 9-11. I have my Series 7, 66, 31, 26 life and health insurance license. And the one thing that the life and health insurance, comp life insurance companies do right is the following. When you buy a policy from a life insurance company, life insurance companies do multiple tests. I'm going to cover five of them. Before they do a blood test and send a phlebotomist to you or do an EKG, which costs them a little bit more money, they'll do three tests that doesn't require them to come to you. One of them is an MVR, which is about your driving record. The other one is a script check, and the last one is a background check. Let me address the script check, why this is so important. The script check allows these life insurance companies to do is they find out what drugs, what medication customers are currently taking. For instance, you can find out if someone's taking Depakote, which is a medication for people that are struggling with bipolar disorder, or Abilify, or Prozac, or Zoloft, or Paxil. You find those things out. Now, keep this in mind. I'm not judging anybody that's going through this. I run a big company and we have a lot of people that struggle with a lot of these different challenges, especially today with all the pressures we have with social media. But does that mean I want them having access to a handgun, a shotgun, let alone a semi-automatic weapon? I don't. Look, it's like saying if somebody drinks and they have that in their body, do you want them driving in the cars, driving in the streets? I don't. I know you don't either. So the same way life insurance companies minimize their risk of who they give a half a million dollar life insurance policy to or million dollar life insurance policy to, we ought to minimize the risk of who we allow to buy a gun. It shouldn't just be a background check, which we currently do. It should be more than a background check and add a script check, which is $14.95, that allows us to find out what medication the folks are using before they buy one of these guns. So point number two is waiting period. You just saw the video earlier, the social experiment that took me 90 minutes to walk out with this. Keep this in mind. Nearly 40 states do not have a waiting period. 10 of them do. You got California, 30 days, Connecticut, D.C., Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, Jersey, New York, and Carolina. They have a waiting period. Now, why is a waiting period necessary? Do you remember earlier when I said 36,000 people died from a gun and 11,000 were homicide, murder, but 21,300 were suicide? Do you remember that? See, the reason why this is important for suicide is 
if I'm in the heat of the moment and I'm so emotional and I'm done with my life, a divorce, a cheating, somebody broke my heart, I got fired, I lost gambling bet in Vegas, I'm suicidal. American Journal of Public Health shows that states with waiting period laws have 51% fewer firearm suicides and a 27% lower overall suicide rate that states without such laws have. Now, how many times have you been ticked off and you didn't do something dumb because a day went by, six hours went by, three hours went by, your emotions were gone, right? These are the moments that we can minimize the number of 21,000 because this isn't just murder. A lot, a lot more are suicides than it's murder. We have to also work on that aspect as well with the medication as well as with the waiting period. Now, let me tell you about point number three, the ease of buying a gun, meaning how difficult is it to buy a gun? So 36 out of 50 states in America, we don't need a permit, a license, or registration to go purchase a gun. You simply go in, you say, I want to buy a gun. You give them your driver's license, you answer 10 questions, and you walk out with the gun, semi-automatic weapon, or your, hand, your shotgun, right? I have a challenge with that. Here's why. Why is it that it's so seamless for you and I to walk out with a gun and we don't need a license, a registration, or permit, or any training or education, but if I want to go get a driver's license, I need to go take a class. You know how they say student driver on the back of the car? I have to go drive with somebody that knows what they're doing, right? Then I come back, I do a Q&A test. It's a test, okay? Then I go do a driving test. Then I get a driver's license. Why do we do that? Because we want to make sure people are safe. Well, why are we not doing the same thing with guns? Why are we not doing that? You see, when it comes on to licenses, real estate license, insurance license, all these licenses, there are some education that you need to do. In my industry, insurance license in some states, you need to do a certain amount of hours to get your license, right? There's an education being done for it. What if we did this, the same thing with guns? Meaning, if somebody wanted to buy a long rifle or a gun, number one, we did background checks and script check, which is what we talked about earlier. Number two, there's an eight hour crash course that somebody needs to go sit down and they can find that. Here's this, here's that, here's this. Three, there's a Q&A test that you have to answer. Four, there's a live test. What if there was a live test? And number five, continuing education every two years that you need to do. And if you don't do that, there's a registration part that allows you not to sell your gun to somebody else because you do not have a license. Just like if I don't renew my real estate license, my insurance license or my securities license, I cannot go sell another policy. That allows people to be updated with the new laws that are coming out. Now, if somebody wants to buy a semi-automatic weapon, semi-automatic weapon, different than a gun, different than a shotgun, you got to do all of the above that we talked about. On top of that, we do a 40-hour crash course that somebody can go out there and learn. And outside of just all the regular testing, maybe it's a different kind of a testing that we do. Why is that so important? Because it shouldn't be that easy for somebody to just go out there and buy one of these. It should not be. People need to be trained, we need to be educated. And many people out there that are watching this who own one of these are saying, honestly, I'm okay with that. I wouldn't mind learning as well. For those of you that know what it is, you grew up with a dad that had all these different guns and he taught you in your backfield and all this other stuff, that's not the case with everybody. There are a lot of people that have no idea. To continue on the same topic of the ease of buying a gun, the other item we have to address is the following thing, which is universal background checks. Now, what do I mean by universal background checks? Because we kind of covered on the first one, so what are you bringing it up again? Here's why I'm bringing it up in this area. See, 78% of people that buy a gun or a shotgun or some automatic weapon, they buy from a licensed dealer. It's a name, 78%, but 22% buy it private, which means I just say, here's $300, I buy it and I walk away. That 22% is way too many people to not need to have a background check done. I don't know who this person is that's buying that gun. We need a 100% universal background check to take place because you don't know who that person is buying the gun from this other person that doesn't have to go through a background check. Everybody that transfers the gun to another person, they need to go through a background check. Similar to when you buy a car. When you buy a car from somebody else, you need to go to the DMV and get the new VIN number, registration, pink slip, so the other person takes ownership of the car and the liability and the responsibilities, boom, no problem. Now we know that this gun is owned by this new owner. We need to do the same thing when it comes down to guns as well as cars. And point number four is the age of buying a gun. You see, in America today, if you and I wanted to have a shot of this Johnny Walker double black, we need to be 21 years old. But in America today, if you want to buy this semi-automatic weapon, AR-15, you only need to be 18 years old. You mean to tell me today, 1.6 million high school students today, according to Washington Post, can buy one of these? And we're more afraid as citizens of this than this? Really? We're more worried about this than this? 
That makes no sense. I don't see the logic behind that. And this is why I say I don't see any logic behind that. This handgun, I have to be 21 years old to buy it. These, I have to be 18. I think we can wait three more years. This is why I think we can wait three more years. You see, I remember being 17, 18. It's a lot of fears. Dates, prom, making sure people like you, acceptance career, what I do next, parents pressure. Parents are comparing you to, why can't you be like Johnny? Why can't you be like Mary? Why can't you be like this? And all those pressures you're dealing with, girlfriend breakup, fight, you're not tall enough, you have pimples, you have all this, oh my gosh. And then fast forward to today, 2018, and being 18 years old today, social media, this person didn't like me, sexting, texting, bullying online. You want me to be dealing with all of those pressures that the average 18 year old is dealing with? On top of that, add social media to it? I'm sorry, I'm not comfortable with this 18 year old that's got all this pressure in his life to be able to go make a decision and buy something like this. I'm not okay with that. And I don't think when you think about it as well, I don't think you're okay with it either. You see, these are basic stuff I'm talking to you about that I think we need to consider changing. Now, everything I covered with you, these were immediate things that we can fix. These are not long-term, we need to wait six years to do this. I think the long-term issues that we're facing in America today are the following things. We're talking about video games that's shooting and six-year-old kids are playing these video games with blood everywhere and oh, I just shot him in his head and like killed him. We're teaching kids how to kill at the age of five, six years old with these video games, with these movies, with these cartoons. Parents don't know how to parent today with all this social media. Parents don't go to a class and say, here's 17 things you need to be looking out for for social media and pressures that your kid is facing. All these teachers in school, your kid has ADD, he doesn't know how to pay attention, I think you need to consider put him on medication. All of this stuff is what we're dealing with today, all of it. Every one of these things we're dealing with today. Those are things that we really need to address because it's long term. And so to recap the four items that we're covering this video today with number one being background checks as well as script check, which is, you know, what drug somebody is taking. So should they really be able to have a gun with the medication that they're on today? Number two being waiting period. Number three being ease of buying a gun. Number four being age of buying a gun. Obviously, a lot of the things I talked about today, maybe somebody may say, Pat, that was kind of, you know, uh, controversial. Why do we talk about this? And maybe we should have set it aside because this is a valuetainment channel with entrepreneurship. And so you shouldn't be talking about these. You may be losing followership. Look, like I said to you earlier today, Republican, Democrat, this is, an, this is an American message I'm giving to you. See, a lot changed with my life on February 1st, 2012. That's the day I became a father. I held my kid for the first time. Patrick Gabriel Bed David, it's my first son. I have another son and I have a daughter. I have three kids. And it's different when you hold blood than anybody else. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You know, today's message, I was hesitant for wanting to maybe make it. Maybe it was an, you know, intentional accident that happened with that posting going out on Sunday that prompted me to make this. Maybe there's a reason for it. Uh, and I hope this prompts you to also do some research. I hope this prompts you to want to go out there and find out for yourself. Maybe what you currently are thinking about isn't the best thing. Maybe what you're thinking about right now is the best thing. You should comment below and let us know. So I'm not telling you guns are bad. I'm telling you maybe we ought to rethink on who ought to have access to these weapons and we need some more education and training about it. So you may agree with some things I said. I want to hear about it. You may disagree. I also want to hear about it. You may be watching this with a group and saying, what do you think about what this guy's saying? Maybe you were at March for Our Lives and you're sitting there with 20 other young adults and teenagers and saying, what do you think about what this guy's saying? I agree. I disagree. All I can tell you is I want to hear about it and I'm hoping you're having a conversation with it. Because if any part of this prompted this much of influence for you to go out there and research and say, wow, this just made my argument stronger, or man, my argument had some leaks here and it made it better, that was the purpose of this video, if it does that. So I have a free PDF for you below with everything I covered in this video that you can print out and look at. It's below, the link is below, you can click on it and go to it. And if you have anything you want to tell me directly, you can tweet me, at Patrick Bed David. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.